Hello there viewers, welcome back to your channel, this is Maverick here with episode 2 of Monster Musume no Oisha-san. So anyways, last episode we are introduced to the, I guess, the setting of the anime and to the two main characters as well. Glenn, a doctor, and Safi, a pharmacist. So it actually was mentioned last episode that she's a pharmacist, or at least the medieval equivalent of that anyways. Uh, although the translation just translated into doctor, which is not quite right. But um, anyways, the more you know. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, last episode it was just a basic introduction. I guess it's safe to say that Safi carried the show um, due to her antics, both in her, I guess, professional, no-nonsense attitude, which is really stemming from her jealousy, right? Alicia brings a little bit of flair and a, bit of, a little bit of humor, comedy, into the series. Now, uh, I guess in this episode, we're really going to see how this series is going to move forward, right? Is it just going to be a pure, you know, rom-com, harem kind of stuff, which is what the Monster Girl series is kind of known for? Or are we actually going to get more into the, um, I guess, more specific details in regards to medical care and so on and so forth, and the unique uh, anatomy of Monster Girls, right? I mean, personally, I am looking forward to the series having just a little bit more depth to it, even if it is ultimately nonsense and fantasy after all. But hey, we shall see, right? So let's get right into the episode. All right, let's begin in three, two, one, play. No. Oh. Glenn and Safi. Long, long time ago. Oh, they were still fighting over at that time? Hmm. That was a hostage, eh? So, who won? Who's the girl to the right of him? Ah, story of childhood friends. Well, I'm too smooth. <laughs> Alright, here's the opening. I don't think the uh, the song that they used was actually sang by the girls within the anime though. I think it's from another, um, another you know, say you idol unit. Oh, not bad. Okay, so there's gonna be five. Arcana project. Okay, I think that's a Seiyu unit. Not entirely sure though. Which is kind of disappointing. I actually wanted them to, since this is a sort of, you know, Monster Musume series after all. 
I wanted them to actually have all the Monster Girls singing the song. Well, yeah, I guess snakes are cold-blooded animals, so they typically like to operate in more shady areas. But they get cold as well, so they can't exactly operate at night either. Huh? Oh, okay. Okay. The sappy is one who likes to go on shopping sprees, I guess. <laughs> ah, she's cute. Huh. So I guess did the mer people actually live in structures underwater? All right. Well, it's not a bad looking place. Oh, hey, it's the seal girl again. I mean, if she's if she's gonna spend her own money. Do you guys actually have a shared budget? Yeah, but for real though, this is a pretty cool place. Having floating vendors as well. Well, I guess mermaids are natural idols, right? I mean, it's your day off anyways, Glenn. Safi is so going to colors.
Rú la la Okay. I'm with Glenn on this one. <laughs> No, oh, that's the lady. All right. <laughs> you actually need that as well. All right. Is this actually from this year? Uh, I don't think so. Well, I'm interested to see how the doctor is able to see she has a problem in just like one glance. It's not a lung problem. Broke problem? Oh yeah, she has gills. <laughs> I 
So they have gills and lungs? Are your hands dis- okay. What? Come on. Can't you sing? Can't you just sing from the water? I mean, there has to be like a compromise here, right? I mean, you're a mermaid, so... How exactly does that work? I mean, in order to be panting, you'd be- have, you'd have to be using your lungs or whatnot, right? I don't... Well, I mean, that's... A mermaid drowning. Okay, so that's why she was panting there, because she couldn't use her gills to breathe.
How how exactly does that work? Oh, I see. But I mean, I don't think they really needed to animate him trying to take a breath there, right? <laughs> Safi is like... Damn, she is super strong. And how... Wait, how, like, how deep was that again? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, why can't you just sing while beside water? There has to be like an easy compromise to all this, right? Moisturizer? Alright. It's <laughs> that's uh, never mind. Lula la. <laughs> Not too friendly, though, of course. Alright, so it seems that we're getting... Hmm. Are, they, are the actor Munster girls actually going to show up later? I presume so, looking at the opening. All right, let's take a look at this ending. But seriously, how long was her tail back there? I mean, I would say that was at least 10 meters underwater. Shaley, water flows down passages, eh? Yeah, so it wasn't to say you. A very bare bones ending, I gotta say. <laughs> well, anyways, I'll see you guys after this. Alrighty, guys, that was episode two of Monisha. Uh, and a quick correction before we start. So the opening song is sang by the group Arcana Project. 
which is actually just a normal Ida group. It's not an Ida group made out of Seiyubes, so now I'll scratch that, <laughs> scratch what, scratch out what I said at the beginning here. It's you know just a normal Ida group under Lantis. Um, but I still stand by my by my words that I feel like it would have been much better if we could have the actress voice actresses of this particular anime. You know, all the monster girls actually come together and sing a character song for the opening or the ending, etc., etc. Right? The most famous Monster Musume series that most people probably know about. That one also utilized this to great effect, and I think it helped drive the overall popularity of the series as well. So, you know, it's it's easy merchandising easy uh, addition to to sell uh, for the series right so um, I do hope that we can get something similar to that later on perhaps like a character song disc or something like that although hard to say since this series is nowhere <laughs> not going to be anywhere as popular as the other mon monster musume right but yeah anyways that's a little bit of an aside note as well let's get into the episode right so at the beginning we do have a little bit of a backstory between Glenn and Safi Oh, quite nice, I guess you could say. And um, man, Safi is such a hottie even back when she was young, right? So I do quite enjoy that. Safi is such a great character to me right now. Again, she is the, um, you know, she she is the one who's always there and always comes through in the end to you know, make things right, including in this episode where she saved both the uh, Doctor and Lulala, right? So, well, that's that. She is a little bit overzealous at times in regards to her affection towards the Doctor, I guess you could say. But, um, no, she she's displaying a lot of personality in all this, and that's a good thing. So, great to that. But more than that, uh, I think in this episode, let's talk a little bit about the the medical focus for this one, right? So we have Mermaid, and I feel like compared to last episode, we do indeed have a lot more in-depth uh, discussion as to particulars of a being a monster girl and how their physiology differs from humans and um, you know, how Glenn actually goes through the motions and tries to figure out what the problem is, right? So I'm guessing perhaps for the last episode, it might be a case where they need to do the introduction and then have a medical case at the same time. So that might have contributed to it being a little bit more rushed, if you will. But like in this episode, I do enjoy how Glenn first observes that, hey, from his knowledge, mermaids aren't supposed to have their gills open on land. Um, talk us through uh, a little bit about the differences between a mermaid and a human and how they operate and whatnot and do you know pretty standard medical checks all all logic all quite logical I believe um, you know the, the only thing I would say about that is that I would have uh, liked it more you know just from a medical perspective if he actually talked through his patient as to what he's doing right I feel like Glenn definitely has this bad habit of getting too engrossed within his own thoughts if you will um, maybe sort of like um, you know sort of like the genius sort of like uh, for instance you know like like a Sherlock Holmes or something if you will right like a doctor house uh, more using utilizing monologue to go through you know, what he believes the situation is and whatnot and then having a genius moment and then sharing it with others but in reality I think doctors are more supposed to uh, you know talk the patients through what is actually happening right uh, indeed I think that is something Glenn I mean he is quite a young doctor I guess you could say so that's probably something that will come with experience but what I would what I've liked him to see more is to once you know all the monologue that he's actually going through whilst going through the motions of checking up on Lulala to actually say that to his patient and say okay so now I'm going to check this for what check this for what I feel like that might make it a little bit more better for the patient as well just a little nitpick there I mean it's it's not required I just feel like that is indeed something that he can do in order to make his patients feel a little bit better here uh, especially in this case where uh, I think this is two episodes in a row where I mean it, it has the comedy aspect right I so I guess he can't really do that but I'm just saying just saying here um, I do like a, a little attention to detail that they made where Lulala was diving underwater to save that, that little boy. Uh, we can actually see air coming out of her mouth there, right? So that is basically telling us, hey, she's still using her lungs underwater because she's trying to breathe out air. Well, at least breathe out air, right? Whether or not she actually filled her lungs with water, that's another story. I don't think we can quite see that. But we do see air escaping that. So that means that she's actually utilizing her lungs and not her gills. So nice attention to detail there. Um, 
which was later on a little bit ruined, I feel, by Glenn um, apparently animating him taking a breath underwater, right? Like, I don't really feel that was... I mean, from a ver visual perspective, I guess it does allow us viewers to know what he's trying to do here, right? He's trying to uh, essentially take a deep breath and then for and then blow into... Um, blow into Lulala's lungs and then try to expel all the water from her lungs and her gills, right? Um, except, of course, as we know, it's you can't really take a deep breath underwater, right? So, eh. But um, at the very least, at least it wasn't a case where, okay, I'm going to try to breathe oxygen into your or something stupid like that. So, uh, I guess for the purposes of, of having a visual aid, if you will, I guess I can give them a pass there. But indeed, that, would, that did seem a little bit dumb to me. <laughs> to be honest, but whatever. Um, and then, of course, the um, the the very end where Safi basically used her her snake tail to essentially save both of them from underwater. Now, I would have liked this scene a little bit more if they actually showed Lala. Perhaps, um, you know, since she should be fine now, right? Her gills are working as normal. Uh, I would have liked her. I would have liked it to see more. You know, her struggling to to carry Glenn upwards. Uh, nearly reaching the surface, but then perhaps being weighed down because you know she she's just very tired. She just went through all this, and um, you know maybe her gills aren't operating at one hundred percent efficiency, so very near the, the surface, but not quite making it. And then have Safi uh, dip down her tail and and whip everybody up, right? I feel like that would make much more sense. Otherwise, hey, looking at just looking at the time that it passed and whatnot, like I said, it, it seemed to me you know. It could have easily been, okay, maybe 10 meters is a little bit too much, but at least 5, 6, 7 meters or something like that, right? Um, and I don't know, I, would Safi be actually able to uh, get her tail so low and, and whip them all up? Well, I guess 5, 6 meters for a Lamia, eh, it might work. But like, but I feel like the, the entire thing would have made much more sense if we at least see um, see Lola try to struggle a little bit and then uh, once she's kind of near the surface but not quite reaching there then have Safi reach in and take her out I feel like that would have made much more logical sense for all parties involved and whatnot um, but hey Safi's a badass so I guess we can leave it at that right so yeah that's pretty much it for this episode uh, I do think the next episode judging from the preview it says something something golem I feel like it we saw the lady, uh, apparently the lady of the city, or you know, some some sort of um, high official, if you will, um, also going to be one of the monster girls in the future. At least from the opening, we can see that there's probably five, right? And we're only through two, so there's three more. Uh, but then there's ten more episodes. So eh, I don't know. Perhaps they are going. We are going to have these characters come back in the future and then have some more interactions there. I would think so. Otherwise, the I feel like it would be kind of a waste to have them all just go one episode by one episode and then leave it at that, right? Although, if they do all come back and whatnot, I expect we're going to have some pretty, um, you know, some pretty interesting scenes from Safi being all jealous and whatnot, right? But hey, that's what we're here for, right? <laughs> at least that's what I feel most people are here for. So yeah, um, anyways, I do believe this episode was an improvement over the last. I liked it. Uh, and... Hopefully, it will continue to go upwards in the future, right? So there we go. That was episode two. I'll see you guys next week as well. Stay tuned, and bye-bye.